welcome to Wilhelm and another spotlight edition of the program. I am your host, Ben Beck. And if you know me, you know that over the years, whether it be here on the podcast or moderating on stage at conventions across the country, I've had the great pleasure of meeting and speaking with so many actors who are part of the DC television universe from most of the cast of Arrow, many of which who I still actually interact with, uh, to The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl. I've had so many interactions and I've loved every single one of them. So, you know, anytime I get the chance to speak to anyone new, I look forward to it. Which brings me to my guest. Uh, He's an actor who you would know from projects like Premium Rush, Yellowstone, but can currently be seen as John Henry Irons, a.k.a. Steel, on on CW Superman and Lois, which returns for its third season this Tuesday, March 14th. Please welcome to Wilhelm, Woolay Parks. Ben, Ben, that was an amazing intro. Dude, I can like... Listen to you talk for a while. You like the you like the movie trailer guy. I you know what? It's so weird because I get that a lot from a lot of my guests. But I mean, as somebody who's like I mentioned, I've moderated panels and things like that. Like yeah. it just it it just becomes part of it. I like making the guest feel good about being on my program. Yeah, and 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 it works. I, I I'm like hyped. I, I'm ready to go. I'm excited. I'm just like I'm here. <laughs> well, I I appreciate that. We you know we 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 spoke a little bit before we started recording. I know you're currently filming right now, so uh, mm-hmm. thank you in advance for just spending a little time with me to have uh, you know have a conversation. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me, dude. I appreciate it. Um, I, I I'm going to start off with this. This is not blowing smoke or anything like that. I as I mentioned, you know, I've been watching all of the CW shows yeah. from. Arrow, The Flash, I've been on stage with, you know, Amel and and so many people. I don't even want to list them all. Uh Uh, Superman and Lois, to me, as somebody who's been a Superman fan my entire life, Mm -hmm. uh, is hands down to me the best thing DC has done in the in when it comes to television. Wow. Uh, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. I received that. No, seriously. Thank you. Like it is it is a good show. But honestly, that's I'm going to give that because of Tyler and Bitsy. Like, you know, like they have such amazing chemistry. I'm like, I'm not knocking the rest of the cast. I mean, obviously we're there and it's a whole show, which is great. But but the show lives and dies based on those two and how they're able to carry themselves. And and they're 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 just chemistry together. Like mm-hmm. I remember I've told people my favorite episode is um one from season one is episode 11, where they kind of do the flashback episode where they're going through. Uh, but you found out they're going through Clark's uh, Superman's memory and Tower was doing that. But they do it as a flashback thing. Yeah. And, and it's great because then it's actually moving the story forward. But what was cool is like, you just, I got to just watch them work. And, and they're so good that I just, I was, I, I, was, I was in it. I was a fan. So that's yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, the, the show itself has such a, I mean, you're right. I mean, you know, Tyler and Bitsy are, are fantastic. I was, I, I've been, I'm very judgmental when it comes to, to people who have played Superman. I've, sure, you know, okay. up until a certain time, you know, Christopher Reeve was, my Superman. And, you know, I've had the pleasure of meeting and being on stage with Brandon and I've even told Brandon that and Brandon's like, that's fine. I completely, yeah. Yeah. you know, I'm completely on board with that, that judgment. <laughs> but then I saw Tyler as like, you know what? Like I'm, I, I've Tyler restored my faith in live action Superman. Yeah. I, I agree. You know, it's interesting for me. I, I don't look. He does his take on is how he does in his his whole acting process. For me, why I think it works and what I love about it, because I'm like you, I'm the same. Quick, Christa Reeve, essential Superman. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that's the pinnacle to me. But why I think he he meets that bar is uh, the way I perceive it is that he Clark is the real guy and mm-hmm. Superman is the alter ego. I think a lot of people who do it now, it's sort of like Superman is the guy and Clark can't put. I put on awkwardness to make it work and humanize myself. Whereas I think, and this is maybe because the idea of our show since so grounded in family, it's Tyler who approaches it from like, Clark is the guy, that's who he wants to be. That's he genuinely is like that. And it's just that he has to like put on the whole Superman there because he wants to protect people and protect those he loves. Yeah, and that and that's one of the things I love about the series as well is that you're right. It's showing the other side of Superman. Everybody knows Superman is the hero, and Clark Kent is the alter ego. But this is kind of it. Kind of swaps it a little bit. Like yes, we get a lot of Superman, but this show is Superman or this show is Clark Kent with Superman as the alter ego. Yeah, and, and that actually goes to what I think what like Todd Helping, our, who you know created the show, who was original our, our first showrunner. We have two of them. It's him and Brent Fletcher now. But like I think well, he we, that was his idea. You know, he he talked about. Friday Night Lights and and how do you ground a man who flies? That was his main focus. Is he mm-hmm. wants to do that? It's about Clark because it's about family. Let's 
that's what people connect to. But I'm not going to connect to a guy who can fly from here to Asia in two seconds. Like that doesn't, I don't know what that's like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's not going to, I'm not going to relate to that, but I can relate to somebody who's like dealing with like loved ones, dealing with like, you know, a mother dying or things like that, or now dealing with kids, whatever like that, I think is what people, people like about the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But this, but this, this episode isn't Ben and Wale talk about Tyler. This is we want to talk. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Look at me. I'm like, yeah, no, no. I'm yeah, just as guilty of it because I was doing it too. Uh, yeah. But you know, the the ensemble cast, I think, is honestly one of the things that makes the show so great. You know, Tyler and Bitsy, as you mentioned, are fantastic. Yeah. But you know, you have you, you have Taylor, you have you know everybody else that put, that makes this this yeah. show as a whole. Yeah. something great to watch yeah. how familiar with you i mean and john henry irons is an iconic character yeah. who if, if i remember correctly debuted in the run of the death of superman run that, that, that's correct yeah that's in the was, comic was, books yeah. uh you know and and he's since become a mainstay in in dc comics so was there and how familiar were you with the character of steel and you know when you took on the role what was the pressure like because you, oh. you had to know the fans were going to be. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, well here, here's, it's interesting. So, so yeah, I, I, first I was familiar with the character. I, I read the death of Superman series. Like I remember it was like, it's still one of my favorites. It's amazing. Like, I remember, yeah. remember like the black plastic it came in. Like, mm -hmm. I think I bought, I bought two copies. I bought one copy to read and then one copy I was going to keep, uh, mm -hmm. which I, did, I didn't keep cause I'm 40. I don't know where it went, but, but, but like, <laughs> I like mine. Still, you, you still have it. Yes, I do. See, I was supposed to be you. <laughs> I got lazy. <laughs> I don't know what I do with it. Uh, 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 but but yeah, I remember all that and was iconic because you got to see that. And and I loved yeah th that whole arc about what they did with like you know like Superman and eventually coming back and John Henry Irons realizing that there's there's a loss there. You know like we we lost our hero and we lost like what he meant. And so he steps into the role simply to be an arbiter for for that kind of justice and and, and that that um those ideals, which is great. Mm -hmm. Of course, our show takes a different route, which has been interesting. But but yeah, so I was originally a fan. That that's how I knew about the whole thing. What was interesting for me though is like I I, I at first when I got cast, I didn't know I was John Henry Irons. I I honestly thought I was Lex Luthor. That's why I know we start with okay. the Captain Luther of it all. So I was worried because I know there's been a lot of iconic Lex Luthers. I'm like, you know, I think about Gene Hackman, you know, uh, Michael Rosenbaum and all that stuff. So I was worried that fans could be like, oh, let's see how this guy does on that. So for me <laughs> to, to play somebody who's not been like done live in live action before, Shaq excluded, where like, you know, like, like, like for me, it's it actually has been kind of freeing uh, mm -hmm. because I've been able to put my own stamp on it. And because they gave my character such a rich backstory, it's been actually really nice and just to to dig into that as an actor. Yeah. And I know one of the things, you know, we're both big fans, you know, it's we we know now that we're both big fans of that whole death of Superman storyline, yeah. you know, from the comic books. And what I've loved about Superman and Lois is the fact that they've actually taken a lot of elements from that storyline, but they've put their own unique twists on it. Like we've uh -huh. gotten so far as of now, from what I can attest, we've gotten obviously steel. We've yep. gotten the eradicator. Yes. And we've gotten Doomsday, but in the form of Bizarro, which I thought yes. was a brilliant twist. I, I know, I, I know. And it's so funny because like, when like because I'm a, I'm the weird one on this on on the cast because I am a fan so mm -hmm. I don't ask ahead of time like the way this sh the show works I'm sure most shows work you know the showrunner will sit the cast down and be like hey this is your art for the next season this is what we're gonna do blah 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 I don't know I don't I always tell Todd knows that like I I like to find out because I like to read in the script so when I saw that happen I was like. <gasps> Oh my yeah. god! And, and and then like and then I geek out because then I'm then I, I go crazy because I go, I go down this weird rabbit hole. Then I'm like, <laughs> yeah. wait, wait, is this a mother box? Is is this what's is that what is that what's happening? Are we getting dark side? Are we getting that granny goodness? What's going on? And Todd just like because I text him these things and he was like. That's a good idea. Ha ha just, ha or whatever. Just the just, fact that you mentioned granny goodness, I know you're a fan of the comic book. Oh. Love. <laughs> like 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 I, I watched Justice League. I, I rewatched Justice League the cartoon just for, for fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, they're they're amazing comics. I mean, and yeah. like I know, you know, we're going into this third season, and I know you you mentioned before we started recording, you guys are literally about to wrap the yeah, the third are. season as well. Days, yeah. I'm I'm very anxious because I know a few of the things that we've been missing is we haven't gotten Cyborg Superman yet from that run of DC Comics, which. Who knows if that's coming? Uh, but I do know you guys actually did cast a Lex Luthor for this season yes. in another actor who I've had the pleasure of sharing the stage with, which is Michael Cutlets. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. He's Michael is 
So good. I, I, we, I, we, I haven't interacted with him as an actor yet. We, our characters okay. not crossed paths yet. But I, I've been telling from what I'm hearing, it, it's he brings. I'm trying to give any. I'm not going to give anything away. I'm just going to yeah, say, yeah, yeah, it's it's a very different take, and I think people are going to be very excited for it. It's going to be that, really, really good. That's amazing. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, I'm going even into the Supergirl element when we got. Oh, and now I can't even remember the actor's name. <laughs> Oh, wasn't it? Um, oh, or John Cryer, you mean? John Cryer, yeah. Like that was that was a casting announcement where I was like, "Wow, that's that's interesting," and then I absolutely loved him. So, I mean, I'm to the point now where, again, I've I've interacted with Cutlets. I'm a fan of his work from you know Lost and The Walking Dead. That like, yeah. The moment I saw that casting, I was like, "Yeah, I can see it. I'm on board with it. I want to see what he can do." Oh, yeah, and, and he can do. He can do. I'm just gonna <laughs> say that he can do. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. Uh, you know, I know we're already through. You know, you guys are already through just about done filming the, the third season. And I think yeah. from what we understand, there's still going to be at least one more after that, at least knock Hopefully. on wood. That's Hopefully. what we're hoping. Exactly. Yes. Uh, and I, so I don't know if this is something you've already had a chance to do or something if you haven't, you would be interested in. But, you know, over the years throughout the Arrowverse, we've had a number of actors who have actually taken the step behind the camera. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Tom Cavanaugh has done it. David Ramsey, Danielle Panabaker, Katie Lotz, just to name a few. Yeah, of those people. Is that anything that would ever interest you to take that step behind oh, the camera and maybe direct? A hundred percent. It's actually interesting because Tom Cavanaugh and David Ramsey have directed on our show multiple okay. times. Yeah, Tom. Tom. Tom uh, directs. Uh, this is the premiere episode of the third season. So on Tuesday, uh, um, when it premieres, that's Tom and Tom. Tom puts such a good stamp because he's so funny. Like he's just he's he's just got yeah. great energy and like he just he just so everything he does is like brilliant. It's a, a lot of he brings out the humor. And David's directed four times now. He directs. An episode this season, and I actually got to shadow him. I got to say, I got to sit behind the 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 the, the director, not director, I wasn't directing, but I got to see behind the scenes and how that side works. So it's something I do, I definitely want to do. Uh, my goal is to get into the Warner Brothers directing program uh, when they okay. reinstate it. That's the whole goal. And yeah, like, look, I I, I I'm I'm a person where. I don't need to be in front of the camera. I don't need to be seen all the time. I just, I, what drives me is something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of telling these stories. And, and from a director's perspective, you're telling this huge overarching story rather than as an actor, I'm just focused on what my character wants and what my character's doing. So mm -hmm. like for me as an artist to be able to kind of live in both worlds, it's great. So that's, that's definitely something that's coming for me on the horizon. That's the goal. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when I actually get to watch an episode of that or anything in general. And I see your yeah. name pop up yeah, as nice. the director, because that's always something as a fan of those series. Anytime I saw Tom Cavanaugh, directed by Tom Cavanaugh, directed yeah. by David Pen uh, Daniel Pennebaker. And I will say, like, I've I'm, a, I'm such a massive fan of, of Cavanaugh's as well. I loved his work on The Flash. Mm -hmm. I love any episode that he directs. So to hear that he's directed episodes this season is oh, yeah. very, oh, yeah. very that's exciting. Good. He's somebody I've always wanted to meet and have not had the pleasure of meeting. However, David, I have shared the stage with probably four or five times. <laughs> nice, nice. At this point, I I love David. I love interacting with him at conventions. I've I've moderated panels with him where it's big groups, yeah. and I've moderated where it's him and I one on one. Mm -hmm. And it's the one on ones that are always more fun. Yeah, yeah, because you really get to go in kind of depth. Of you really get to like like hone in on stuff. Yeah, it's good. Oh, and he's just a he's just a fun person. Oh yeah. To be oh yeah. Play you know, to be on stage with. But on that note, you know, of conventions, you know, having mentioned that I've been, you know, traveling to a bunch of them, I've moderated for a bunch of DC people. Is that anything you've done? I mean, because a lot of these people in this world are doing these conventions now. Um, have you have you been to one yet? Is it on the horizon? Is no, it something I, that you want to do? Yeah, I know that's the sad part. You know, like when we first, when the show first came into inception or whatever, and I got cast, this is right before COVID. Like, I think I got cast something like the week before COVID or whatever it was really short. Okay. Cause you know, with the idea was, you know, we we're going to film a pilot and go to Comic-Con and do all those things. And then like come back and shoot the show and all that. And I was super excited. Like the idea of getting to go to Comic-Con is insane. Mm -hmm. uh, and then COVID happened and shut it all down and we never did anything. Uh, okay. You know, we did Paley Fest last year, which was great, but it still wasn't as much because you don't get to interact with the fans. It's sort of like more like what you're talking about. You know, you're on stage, there's a moderator, and people get to ask questions, which is cool. But meeting the people is really, really nice because you get to see how it affects them. Um, so, yeah, at some point, I haven't done any uh, cons outside of like, you know, like I said, Paley Fest, which isn't really a con. Uh, possibly in the future, we'll see. I, 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 My hope is just that we get to go to Comic-Con as, as a group. Like, if we do have, you know, maybe one or two more scenes. If, if I would love if we get a heads up 
Uh, that's the main thing. So they could have, they're going to carve out a really good arc for the show and a good ending. And I would mm. love to be able to go celebrate that by going to Comic Con and being like, "Hey, this is our final season. Here's the last hurrah." So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, you know, on that note as well, you know, there's been a lot of big shakeups in the world of DC currently, especially you know yeah. with James Gunn and Peter Safran coming in and kind of. Like I said, just shaking they're everything. They're taking out a sledgehammer. They're going like, listen, this is an idea. But they, they obviously they have a, they have a vision for what they want. And mm-hmm. you know, like James Gunn is so good. I don't I don't know much about Peter Safran and his work, but obviously, like they have a vision. They know what they're doing. So you just got to trust what they're what they're what they're working on. Yeah, and I'm similar. Like I'm not familiar with Peter Safran as well, but James Gunn, on the other hand, like I'm a fan of. Um, you know, his all of his work from what he's done with Marvel and now DC, even yeah. going back before that to Slither and, and, and things oh, wow. like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I'm, I'm with you. I kind of have, I have, I'm intrigued by all these yeah. announcements that I'm hearing, but I still remain confident in yes. what we're going to get is, yeah. Yeah, is going to be agree. good stuff. Yeah. But how has that been like with the vibe on set with everything, you know, hearing all these shakeups, you know, uh, the Arrowverse as a whole, with the exception of Superman and Lois, which is kind of a separate thing anyway. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, the Arrowverse as a whole is coming to an end with The Flash this season. It is. It so, is. I mean, uh, has there been an interesting vibe on set? Is it, you know, how has it been? Yeah. No, no, that, that's a great question. I mean, that's the thing. Look, I, I, as I told everyone, we, I don't know. We don't know. Nobody mm-hmm. knows. Like, like, literally, I was talking with Todd and Brent this week. They still don't know. We're under the assumption that we'll get one more season. I don't know. So I think that is what's made it okay for us because everyone is sort of in the same boat. Like, no, we think we get one more. It'll suck if we don't. Like, that'll yeah. be the sad thing because, like, again, we it's, it's not like we're having proper goodbyes. It's sort of like, okay, I'll see you again, you know, whatever many months, you know, we tend to start filming in September. So so that's what it is. That's why we're, you know, I mean, there's definitely that weird interpretation of, like, by now we have known, you know. Uh, I would I would prefer for, to know uh, uh, ahead yeah. of time, but we're just going with the assumption that we're coming back, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you. I would like to know, like, I want to hear like Superman is coming back. Superman and Lois is coming back for the fourth and final season. Yeah. Like, I want to, I want to hear that rather than know, you know, rather than find out in August, uh, CW cancels Superman and Lois. hundred percent. And agree. then we get a huge, massive cliffhanger. Yeah. Or we don't get that kind of conclusion to the story. And, I agree. you know, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's, for you guys, that's absolutely you want to. It's job security for you guys, but it's oh, fans. a hundred percent, man. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like and, and that's here's and that's the thing. I, I, you know, I go back to look. I try to live. I try to look at things from a positive perspective, and like try to live in gratitude. You know, we've gotten three seasons, uh, uh, which a lot of shows don't get. That a lot most shows don't see the light of day, let alone get multiple seasons. So, so yeah, even if this is the final season, that would suck because we wouldn't have known ahead of time. That would be really tragic, but. Yeah. I hope that we do get at least one more. And like you said, yeah, we get to wrap it up and, and really conclude the story the way that they want and we want to, rather than just sort of being like, oh, well, that's it. Good luck. Bye. Yeah. Oh, well, well now I got to find something else to do because yeah. <laughs> you know, time to start putting the auditions back out there. Exactly. Yeah, there we go. All right. You know, <laughs> to, to find more work. But, you know, it's one of the things that I said, you know, going back to something I mentioned a little bit earlier on about how good the show is to me. Mm-hmm. And I know a number of people who agree with me who have kind of been skeptical about, like, the the path that the Arrowverse has taken and the quality of some of the shows. But I, I still remain a fan of of all yeah. of them. I'm still watching The Flash in the final season now. Yes. But Superman and Lois is something that I have said, and it's no disrespect to, to CW and all the p- great people that work at CW, but I have said Superman and Lois is too good for the CW. <laughs> I want to see it. I By the end of season one, I honestly, and I, I put this out to a number of friends, yeah. I said, I want to see it move to HBO Max, and I want to hear a little language. Yes. Because and, and- now that we're on HBO Max, we've got a little bit more freedom to do that. Yes. Well, um, well, that's the whole thing, which is so weird about it. Again, like you said, all the turmoil, because... Yes, there's a world where the CW, because they're, they're trying to move in a different direction, they're like, we don't want you, and then we go to HBO Max. I don't, again, and that's not me, no, I don't know anything. I'm just saying it's just a possibility. Mm-hmm. And that would be interesting because for us, uh, and this is what I don't think people really understand and really can respect about network TV. You have you have a limited amount of time to do everything because you have commercials. So it's like 42 minutes and change. You know what I mean? They have to tell the story. We have a large cast. You have to do it in this um, a certain amount of time. Whereas when we're streaming now, 
Some episodes are 40 minutes. Some episodes are an hour long. You know, it just depends on what story they want to tell. Like, I'm obsessed with Last of Us, as like so many people are right now. I podcast on it every week. Do, do, because I played <laughs> the game. And, Me you know, too. Like, I, Me I too. Was, I, when, when they cast Bella Ramsey, because like, I, I, you know, I remember her from Game of Thrones. I was like, oh, it's interesting, because I thought it was going to be Caitlin Dever, Devlin or whatever. Like, I thought, because she looked so much like Ellie. Yeah. But yo, did you see? I don't want to get too deep in it, but yo, they, I, they're, they're killing. I, I know we, I know we have a limited time for this yeah. one, but I'm gonna have to have you back on, and we're just gonna talk the Last of Us. That's all we're gonna do. Go geek out yeah. about it. But the, but the point is, they are able to tell their story they want because they have freedom of, of that. They don't have to worry about oh, we got 42 minutes. They can do whatever they want. So yeah, that would be if that did happen. That would be nice to f- get that kind of freedom. But we'll see. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, no spoilers, but what can what kind of things can we expect from from this third season f- for the fans? Like tease the fans a little bit. I, I know. Me I being know, one I know. of them. Uh, what, what's up? Me being one of them. You being one of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. I mean, like, like obviously, superhero antics. Like, it, it's. I, I think what I like, what what I what I appreciate, what they try to do with the show is they try to do things a little differently. Like from the get go, was about like Superman's family rather than just him being like powerful and you know we know about Aunt, not Aunt May, Jesus, that's Spider Man. Uh, about his uh, about his <laughs> like all that stuff or whatever. Uh, 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 so this time, you know, they have a family and they have kids, which is something we haven't seen before. This is the same thing with this season. They're, I think they're taking the show in a different direction. That that people can um, hopefully relate to uh, and understand. And I, I think I, I, I appreciate us them trying something new. I'll tell you from a personal perspective, uh, with John Henry Eyes versus Bruno Mannheim, because Chad Coleman is ridiculous. I love me some Chad. I've had I Chad love, on the podcast. Yeah, everybody, yep. I love, everybody loves Chad. Chad, Chad <laughs> yep. crazy. Chad, Chad, Chad be like, he's cerebral. So, you know, there's just nothing but weirdness and crazy coming out of his head, but he's so yeah. brilliant. And so I will tell you, you're going to see a lot more John Henry Irons. Uh, and that's the thing. We see Steel, which is great. We forget that this John Henry Irons was a military man. Like, you know, like he he's trained. And you're going to see a lot more of me fighting as John Henry than just as Steel. That both that's, happens. And that's it's, fantastic. We're taking it. It's going to be the most action uh, you've ever seen out of Steel. It's going to be this season. It's going to be really cool. I got to do a lot of cool stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't. I I can't wait to see what you guys are going to bring to us this season. You know, as I mentioned, uh, the season comes back. Season three uh, debuts on the CW this Tuesday, March fourteenth, eight p.m. Eastern. Um, Wole, where can people find you online if they want to find you on social media and follow you? Yeah, very boring. Wole Parks Instagram. That's <laughs> I, I, it's me. There's a blue check. Uh, that's 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 my that's main. How thing you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, keep it simple. That's how you know. Um, I know we, uh, we've we come to the end of the time, unfortunately. Um, stay on the call. I'm just going to wrap things up now. But to everybody else that's listening, uh, Wole, thank you for joining me for this. I'm sure the fans are very appreciative of the conversation as well. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you, we wish you, wish you so much luck. We're looking forward to this third season of Superman and Lois. And, of course, fingers crossed for more yeah. after that. Uh, to everybody else that's listening or watching on YouTube, thank you for being a part of this audience. And we'll see you next time on another episode of Wilhelm. Well